According to recent statistics, colon cancer is the third most common cancer diagnosed in both men and women here in the U.S. But new breakthroughs in cancer research can help make that number far less frightening. Researchers are now looking to our DNA for answers, for treatments, and for a cure. Joining us this morning to talk about the exciting field of genomics is Dr. Richard Goldberg, a distinguished professor and clinical researcher in hematology and oncology at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. He's here as part of our Hear Us Roar Healthy Living Corner, a partnership we share with Women Magazine. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the show. Thank you. You know, it's really important to talk about colon cancer and many women out there, including myself, we have lots of questions. So the first one I can only think of that I would want to know is, Doctor, what exactly are some of the signs and symptoms? So some people have signs and symptoms and some people don't. Really? And that's why colonoscopy is so important when you get to be over the age of 50. But the symptoms that we sometimes see are bleeding. Okay. Uh, not all bleeding is colon cancer, but you need to check it out. Sure. A change in bowel habits. If your stools get pencil thin every day, it's hard to push it out. That's something you need to talk to your doctor about. Pain, uh, and the pain isn't always cancer, but check it out. Can colon cancer is one of those diseases that is highly curable if you catch it early, right. so don't put it off. Absolutely, and that's a great message. Now, when talking about colon cancer, what's the best treatment for an early stage and let's say some more serious stages after? So the good news is that early stage colon cancer is almost always curable, and that's why it's so important to get screening done. If we catch the colon cancer when it's just in a polyp, sometimes the colonoscopist will cure it. If it's a little deeper than that, the surgeon will cure it. If it's already spread, though, through the wall of the colon, sometimes we have to do more chemotherapy mm -hmm. uh, or radiation if it's a rectal cancer. And so the earlier you detect it, the less you have to do in order to cure it. Now, we are even curing advanced colon cancer these days in selected cases. Uh, but it's far more easier to cure if caught early. Now, let's talk about some new tools that can help determine treatment options in a more personalized way. Okay. Tell me some. So there, we're using DNA now in ways that we never would have imagined. We are beginning to use DNA for detecting cancer by looking at the fingerprints of the cancer cells that are shed into the colon. Wow. We're beginning to use the DNA of the tumor to help us determine whether someone has a good prognosis or a poor prognosis. Uh, and we're using DNA to help us choose treatments. Interesting. I mean, it's, it, what, what's advanced is unbelievable. Now, there's something I do want you to explain to me. It's called Oncotype DX. How is it performed? Why is it performed? And when is it used? So Oncotype DX is one of the first things that has applied genetics to the clinic in a way where I can sit with a patient and say, you have a stage 2 colon cancer. It okay. hasn't spread to your lymph nodes. 80% of people with this are cured. But we need to know who are the 20% that aren't going to be cured. And what Oncotype DX helps us do is to sort the higher risk patients from the lower risk patients by examining their tumor. So it's one of those things that is really personalized medicine that's mm. already in the clinic. Now, do you have experiences using genomics in the treatment of some of the patients that you could share with us, doctor? Absolutely. So for stage two patients, when I have a conversation with them, we talk about their prognosis and we talk about whether or not they want to have genetic testing to help sort them better. <laughs> into high or low risk stage two patients. And some of those patients will say, well, you know, I really want to take chemotherapy because I want every chance of beating this. But in some cases I can reassure them that the odds that the cancer is going to come back is very low because of the genetic profile on their individual tumor. And when using genomics, doctor, does it, does it help increase survival rates at the end of the day? At the end of the day, it is going to absolutely help us really? uh, increase survival rates. The fascinating thing about genomics is there's so much information there that we're just learning how to use this tool. But our tools for analyzing it keep getting better and better every year. And the ability to do full-scale genomics on an individual is getting cheaper and cheaper. So we've just begun to see the value of genomics in the cancer clinic. Fascinating. Thank you so much, doctor. Great My information. Pleasure. But the most important thing here is that it is a preventable cancer, and really, you can prevent it from doing anything, any harm to you. 
And the most important message that I can give is it's far more embarrassing to die of a preventable disease than it is to have a colonoscopy. So remember that when you see your primary care doctor. And on that note, we'll end it. Doctor, thank you very much. And just for the record, I did get mine last month. And if you'd like more information about these new advances in the treatment of cancer, check out the website cancerconnect.com. And if you'd like what you've seen here today, keep watching The Balancing Act for more great information from our Hear Us Roar Healthy Living Corner.